Hi there, I'm Chef Lauren Smith, and this is Comfort Food with a Conscience, where we teach you how to cook your favorite comfort food recipes, but in such a way that they support your health and sustainability. Today we're gonna to be playing with an all-American apple pie. Well, kind of. It's a gluten-free, vegan, no sugar added version, and surprisingly, it's delicious. So it's a very classic recipe, super simple, and you can translate it however it fits you best. But I'm telling you, you're really gonna like this one. So stay tuned, I hope you guys enjoy. To get this recipe rolling, you really wanna start on your pie crust first. What we're gonna end up doing is splitting the pie crust in half. So we'll have the bottom portion that goes in the pie pan and then the top portion that goes over. The bottom portion we have to blind bake, or in other words, par bake, so that it's a little bit stiffened up before we put the juicy filling into it. And it's just really simple. Grab yourself a large bowl, and we're gonna walk through the ingredients here. But first remember, you want a food scale when you're baking. I can't emphasize that enough. Food scales with baking bring it down to a precise science, and that's all that baking is. You really just have to follow the rules. It's kinda why I struggled with it for so long. But just a simple little food scale so you can measure out your ounces, because all these different kind of gluten-free flours are gonna be different in weight and density. So what we're gonna start with is we had eight ounces of a sorghum flour. That's another nice gluten-free flour. It's a little bit sweet and grainy. And then we had six ounces of a white rice flour. It's a little bit sweet and it's very soft. And then four ounces of a potato starch. And it pretty much feels like cornstarch. It's really fun to play with and make sure you do potato starch, not potato flour. And then just on top of that, I have two teaspoons of xanthan gum, one teaspoon of guar gum, which are of course our leaveners and binders because there's no gluten, and then a teaspoon of a really nice salt. I'll go straight into our little bowl here. Okay. And before you start anything, you want to mix it up really well. Because these flowers are different colors and there's different consistencies in here, you really want to make sure they're mixed up nicely. You don't want a big bite of sorghum and then a big bite of potato starch. Okay. We're nice and evenly incorporated now. And the fun part we're gonna add 12 ounces of an all vegetable organic shortening. This is what makes it vegan. If you don't care about being vegan, you can use butter, nice unsalted organic butter. And if you don't wanna go all vegetable shortening, you can supplement it with a little bit of coconut oil. So you could do maybe eight ounces vegetable shortening and four ounces of coconut oil. Just again, you have to kind of experiment with what you know works for your body. So I have my 12 ounces of that shortening here, and this has been in the freezer. You want it super cold. There's a special science to a perfect pie crust. And we're just gonna kind of gradually scoop it on out. Maybe I can get it out in one big piece. And then for our next step, what we wanna do is cut the fat into the flour. You can use a pie cutter like this. This is an awesome tool, or you can just have at it with your hands. But essentially, we're looking for about the size of a pea. You think about like pea gravel. That's what we want this mix to look like. I know it sounds kind of weird, but it ends up working out pretty well. So I'm just gonna go to town with this and start shaving off this cold, cold, cold shortening. And then slowly, it'll start incorporating into my flour. So our dough is just about at that nice gravelly state. If there's big clumps of the veggie shortening, don't worry, that's just fine. So I'm just gonna get rid of this and we're gonna add three to four ounces of water. Depending on where you are, what the conditions are, it's gonna be different for everybody. But what we want is for this to form into a nice solid uh, ball of dough. And we don't want it sticky and we don't want it too dry. So I'm gonna start out with two ounces and kind of work my way up. Okay. 
And I like to just get on in there with my hands. Just kind of move everything around so it doesn't get too sticky in spots. And I think that was probably a little bit more than two ounces and it looks like it's actually gonna be just about perfect. So I'm just gonna make this into a big ball and transfer it right on into a piece of plastic or a plastic bag. And this is a lot of dough because we have the top and the bottom piece. So if you do two big balls, that's just fine. Once the dough is in here, we wanna make sure we get as much of the air out that we can. So we want this dough to chill for about at least 30 minutes, an hour is preferable. We basically, we want that fat to set up really nice. Makes it that much better. Okay, I think that about will do it and I'll save my scraps because I like to use them for little dough cookies later on. My good friend Sam taught me that one. Okay. Just gonna get the air out of here. Let these chill and refrigerate for about an hour. I have an extra piece sitting in the fridge, so I'm gonna bring that out and show you how to roll it out and make up our nice little uh, blind baked bottom part of the pie. So I just grabbed my chilled dough out of the fridge. and I'm gonna make a little space to roll it out. Get rid of these guys. So you wanna grab yourself two sheets of parchment or wax paper and a nice little rolling pin. So lay one sheet down and I'm gonna take half of this dough, so I'm just gonna roughly break it in half. Remember all those little pieces of scraps you wanna save. And so we'll just make up a little a little bit of a ball, press it down a tiny bit, and grab your other sheet of parchment. And we're gonna roll this puppy out. So we want nice quarter inch thick discs, one for the bottom and one for the top. Okay, so we're getting just about there, about that quarter inch thickness that we were looking for. The great thing about this dough is there's no gluten in it, so you can't overwork it and you can't mess it up that bad. If it cracks or if it splits when you're messing with it, you honestly, you can just treat it like Play-Doh and just stick things back together. And there's something to be said about the therapy that is rolling out dough. It's just a nice time. So this is good to go. And just grab yourself any old pie pan. I just have a simple little Pyrex one right here take off one of the layers. I'm going to do the pan right on over. Use my forearm and just flip it on over. And just gently press the dough right on into the creases of the circle. Like I said, if it splits or if it cracks, don't cry about it, you'll be okay. And then I'm just gonna work my way up onto the edges. Make sure everything is nice and even. And then just gently pull away that parchment. Okay, not too shabby. I'm just gonna trim off the little edges just gonna pat everything down nicely. Just take a knife. Don't cut yourself, but any kind you want. Just go around right at the very outer rim. And like I said, you wanna save this crust, any scraps that you get. Let's go all the way around. And when we put the top layer on, it'll be you know that bubbly kind of rustic looking crust on top and we can do the edges really nice by pinching them together. But we don't have to worry about it right now because we're gonna blind bake this guy. 
And like I said, it's setting it up so that it's a little bit cooked so that it can withstand the moistness of the apple filling. All right, nice and perfect. I'm gonna to top this off with a sheet of tin foil filled with beans. What that is is a pie weight. So they make ceramic pie weights. You can do tin foil and beans, whatever works. You just want it pressed down so that it doesn't get too bubbly or tall and take up the room that your filling needs. Here's my tin foil. I had some old lentils sitting around. I'm just gonna press the tin foil around the edges. Spread out the lentils evenly. Homemade pie weight. So I'm gonna pop this into a 400 degree oven for about 10 minutes. I want a little bit of golden brown, but remember it's halfway cooked. So while my pie crust is baking, I'm gonna work on the filling. And it's, again, another really easy recipe. The first thing you wanna get started on are your apples, because they kinda of take a while. I picked six nice pink lady apples. They're a perfect combination of sweet and tart. You can use your favorite kind of apples, but I prefer something that's a little bit of both. A lot of people are like hardcore Granny Smith. A lot of people want the sweet. Pick something in between. So what I've done is just slice these guys up. This is my last one. I have a big bowl and just peel away. Get yourself a nice sharp peel. Okay, so once we're peeled up, I'm just gonna quarter it. And you know, you can use an apple core. It's a circular thing that you stick all the way down. If you don't have one, no big deal. So take each quarter and do a little diagonal cut, and that takes all the gross stuff out. Okay, and then just slice these up. Again, quarter inch, so you're looking at four to five slices. Quality check, delicious. I have in here a tablespoon's worth of fresh squeezed orange juice, as well as the zest of a whole orange. Now people, toss apple in lemon to keep it from oxidizing and turning brown. When you do that, sometimes it can be too tart or too lemony. With orange, it's much more agreeable and it's a beautiful flavor to add to it. All right, so we're gonna set these aside. I'm gonna get a large pan going on a high heat. And I'm gonna to add to that two cups of water And then in here we have a quarter cup's worth of an organic cornstarch, about a quarter teaspoon of a nice salt, and then a teaspoon of a nice organic cinnamon. I'm just gonna add this on in. And then to that, we're gonna do a quarter cup of xylitol crystals. You could use stevia, whatever kind of sugar replacer that you like. You can even use real sugar if you want. It's very low, this recipe. We can't call it sugar-free because there's naturally fructose in the apples, right? But it's pretty good on the sugar scale. And then lastly, I have here two teaspoons worth of a nice organic agave nectar syrup. Now, agave nectar is not sugar-free, but if you wanted to do completely sugar-free, you could use a nice maltitol syrup. Don't go too crazy on it because it will kind of work as a laxative. But agave nectar, I like it. It works for me. It's perfect, so I'm going to use it. And you'll see when those apples start cooking and their own natural juices starts reducing, you really don't need much sugar for this. We're just going to whisk everything together. Just want everything nice and incorporated. So I'm just gonna let this mix come up to a nice rolling boil. Make sure you keep whisking because what's happening is that cornstarch is kind of cooking out. Then I'm gonna add my apples. All 
variety. We just want to coat the apples in the mix and then we're going to cook them for about six to seven minutes. We just want the apples to get soft. Once they're nice and soft, we'll take them off the heat, cool them in the fridge completely, then we can assemble our pie. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep these apples stirring and I'll watch them every couple minutes. I want everything to keep moving around nicely. So while those are going, I'm gonna cheat. I made another batch earlier today and you'll see this is what they come out like. This has been chilling in the fridge for a couple hours and it's just a classic apple pie filling. So I'm gonna take one of my blind baked pie crust that's been sitting for a while. See there's just a tiny touch of golden brown to it. That's all we want, but if you pressed in, you'd see that it was still a little bit raw. So I'm gonna add all of my apples right on in. I'll make sure you get all of it. Spread it as even as you can. Try to get the awkward slices into the edges. And we'll do a little bit taller right in the center just to give it that volume of apple pie. And next we're gonna add the second piece of dough that we rolled out right on top and we'll make a pretty edge, throw it in the oven and we'll have pie. So here we go, remember the two sheets of parchment paper. I'm just gonna take this and softly go right on over. Like I said, don't have a heart attack if anything falls apart. Everything is easily fixable with this kind of pie dough. And honestly, you only want an inch or so over the edge. See, it's easy as pie just to put it back together. I knew that one was coming. I've patched up my little edge that I lost earlier. And again, I'm gonna go around with my knife and just very roughly trim off any of the extra. Do mind your fingers. Just like so. Keep going around. Almost there. All right, we'll save our scraps for later. And then if you just go around the edges, just take your thumb and your forefinger, push it in, just like that. So it's like you're pinching it kind of. And you can do any kind of pie crust you want. You can make a fancy pattern, you can make it latticed. Go ahead and float your boat on that one. I'm rustic, I wanna eat this pie, but I also want it to look okay for my friends. Okay, definitely not the Mona Lisa, but I'll tell you what, it's gonna taste awesome. I'm just gonna cut a little X right on top that lets the steam release very classic look of an apple pie. And if you do sugar, you can sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top halfway through the baking. Or if you want the sugar free, you can sprinkle some xylitol crystals right on top just as you take it out of the oven. So my oven I've reduced to 350 degrees. I'm gonna pop this in for about 20 minutes until this crust is just golden brown and flaky and bubbly and everything you want an apple pie to be. And then we'll be ready to have our apple pie. So we'll see it in a minute. All right, so this is it. Our beautiful little gluten-free, vegan, and no sugar added apple pie. It's that simple, really, really rustic, but super delicious. You'll see that the crust gets nice and golden brown on the edge with about 20 to 25 minutes of baking. And like I said, you could add those little xylitol crystals to give it some sheen. Typically you would egg wash a pie like this with the crust, but because we're going vegan, we don't really need to do the egg, right? I don't like, well, I do like eggs. My body doesn't like them. So it's just as beautiful, just like this. 
Now you can sit and let it cool for about 10 minutes and enjoy it. I kind of want to just dig into it right away. But regardless, this is just such a fun recipe. Eat it hot, a la mode, freeze it, eat it cold, bring it to a picnic, something fun like that. And here's the important thing to remember. Although it's vegan, gluten-free, and no sugar added, it's still a pie, right? It's still different kinds of carbs, even though they don't have gluten. So what I'm trying to say is you're not free of the cellulite monster, so still be responsible with it. But it's just a great way to support health with the things that don't typically affect people, like gluten, like sugar, like eggs, all those kinds of things that bug us. On top of that, it's packed with great nutrients with those wonderful whole flours. Using organic ingredients, involve your friends with it, involve kids with it. It's just fun and it's just comfort food. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one and I hope you enjoy it.